Here Hi. we are. How are you doing, Pat? Good. How are you? I'm good. I am. Uh, I just got a quick say that I have been moving for the past two weeks. A lot of you have been with me on my journey of uh, building a house and moving in, and the apartment's almost empty. I just got to like turn it on its side and dump out the little corners, and then I'll, my apartment will be as empty. As long as you got your machines out, your quilts oh, yeah. out, you know your what? fabric, the you're good. The machines are out because my <laughs> sister had me finishing a quilt for her for last night, so I had to set up like all my machines just to get her thing done. So yeah, machines are good. So, so. you set up your sewing room first. Of course, and then the, the rest of the house everything comes follows. After that. Yes, yes. What's important the, is important. The kitchen and the hobby room, everything else, yeah, can wait. Yeah. <laughs> How's everybody doing? This is Tips, Tools, and Techniques Club from the Sewing Studio in Maitland, Florida, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been doing face-to-face uh, -face tips, tools, and techniques for 12 and a half years, and we've been doing this since last March. So um, thank you all for joining us, and if wherever you're from, let us know in the comments because we love to see that. Um, yeah, we certainly are reaching a whole new crowd out there. Of I know quilters and from all over the country and yes. some parts of the world too. I know so, that is very exciting. Yeah, it is. A quick shout out to um, Seaside Peacemakers. I did a lecture with them last Wednesday, and I added a bunch of people to my email list. So hopefully you got the email about this and you're here and a quick shout out to the little retreat going on over at the San Pedro quilting retreat. I was there yesterday and we were having a good time. So I'll say hi to all of them. So retreats are back on. Yes, thank goodness. We're coming back to life. Oh, it was <laughs> so good to be around. Well, both yeah. both events, it was just, I kept telling her, oh, it's just so nice to be here. Yes, it was lovely. It's a breath of it oh, is. fresh air. Just to be around people who yes. talk quilting and yes, yes. Okay, well, um, while we're waiting for people to continue to get on, I'm going to show you a few of my classes that are coming up. I think I have either three or four new classes. This is one of them, it's called Block Talk, and I'll talk more about this quilt in a moment. But that class is in August, it's two mornings. I'm also going to teach, I continue to teach something called Quilting Basics. So if you've been making masks for the last however many months and you're ready to make a quilt, I've got a class, it's two mornings, and I have once a month, Quilting Basics 1. I'll teach you everything from choosing fabric, pressing, cutting, sewing, or piecing, um, basting, quilting, and binding, all in six hours. So it may go fast, but you'll get it done. And then if you want to dive a little deeper in any of those topics, come back for a, for a long class on just one topic, which we have. So that's Quilting Basics. We have one in July, one in August, one in September. O. Henry is, I think I just taught my seventh O. Henry class, and it was great, and we continue to teach that. Thank you. This so continues to be a bestseller. It's a great they, seller. Yeah, they I come out beautiful. This is the fifth one I've done, but uh, the idea here is you take a panel that's beautiful, or you could just take a large print, either one, cut it into four columns, add three other fabrics and then a sashing fabric. This is the first one I used uh, like a really highly printed sashing. Usually mine's, mine are nearly solids. Anyway, so the first morning we cut everything. I give you some great rotary cutting tips and lessons. And then the second, the second week we sew them all together. There's only 22 seams. So whew, there you go. 22 seams, so it's, uh, it goes together pretty, pretty well. That's called O. Henry, and I'm teaching that in July and in September. Um, there's a couple I've listed here that are hanging somewhere, and I was too lazy to go, go get them off the wall, so, uh, but you can go look at them. This is, uh, continues to be a favorite. This is called um, Attic Windows, and actually I have it upside down. The nice thing this one I used to make these squares. print and so in the supply list if uh, interested in that quilt that's called windows and 
One morning, you're going to go home with five or ten blocks made, and you'll understand, and then you can go home and finish the, finish the blocks. This is uh, the tumbler. I keep talking about tumblers because I absolutely love the way these tumblers go together. In fact, at Project Linus this week, we made, oh, I've got this sideways, but that's okay. That's um, okay. In Project Linus, we made t tumbler quilts for the kids this Tuesday. Um, but this is cut with the AccuQuilt cutter, which means it's super precise and the pieces go together really well because the triangles have been cut off the corners. So that's an AccuQuilt class. You don't have to have an AccuQuilt machine. You can borrow ours in the classroom, but you will need the die and the mat. So I think the die is around $30. I should know the number, but I don't. Um, and that's a beginner one, right? And that's a beginner class, yes. So. Um, the o. Henry is a beginner, of course, of course, Quilting Basics is a beginner class. Um, if it has a single asterisk next to it, that means it's a beginner class. So take a look at that. I also am teaching machine quilting. I think the July one is full, September 30th. And then if you're a working person during the week and you want to take a weekend class, I try to offer it at least twice a year on a Saturday. So that's October 30th. It's not on the system yet. But as soon as it should be, I don't know, beginning to mid-September, we put our next schedule on. So look for that if you want to take my machine quilting class on a Saturday. So the next, the, Quarter. this schedule is out and up. Yes. Um, it's online at sewing.net. The, the next schedule will be our busy one, October, November, yes. December. Yes. We're expecting to be very busy. And of course, we're going to have our events kind of your um, yeah everything's you know, coming back everything's coming back Everything, so yeah. um so yeah watch out for our next class schedule with you on there yeah so yeah, yeah we have to look ahead um, very much ahead yes we have a shop hop going on too and i forgot the information so i will get you the shop hop information before before we close today um let's let's get started i wanted yeah. to show you the first project um gotta love love these pom-poms um, this is a six-hour serger quilt. That's the official name for it, a six-hour serger quilt. And I'm here to tell you, this took me, once I cut out all the fabric, it took me about two hours to put together. Um, this is an old, old Kay Woods uh, pattern that she developed years ago. And um, she, we have made, I actually belong to an organization, I believe it was my quilt guild, where we made... 30 or 40 of these in a couple days using the method I'm going to show you. Uh, we're going to go through it step by step. Pat's got her sergers out, so she's mm -hmm. going to show us how to serge a quilt. If you don't own a serger, we'd love for you to come here and buy one, but you can also use your sewing machine. This just works out really fast with a serger. I've actually made several quilts with a serger, as, as has Pat. And um, the nice thing is when you work with a serger, it has two lines of stitching. So you have basically a double, double stitching line. So that's two needles, two, thank you, two <laughs> needles. And so it's super sturdy. So if you've got somebody who likes to tear up quilts, a serger mm -hmm. may be the way to go. So I've got a quick little demo and then Pat's going to help me with that. Um, you know, well, why don't we continue to hold it and I'm just going to talk a little bit about, about it. By the way, these are art gallery fabrics. They're on my favorites page. If you're looking for the favorites page, um, it, if you scroll to the top it's a, of, of your Facebook page, it's there. But every once in a while, Eric will also put my favorites page link in the comments. And are we, um, is the audio okay? Okay. I'm seeing all these audio comments, so you got me worried. Um, so the very first thing we do is we create, and uh, by the way, the numbers on this are so nice. This is six by 18. These are both six by 18. This is six by 18. And then it starts increasing by a factor of six. So very easy to, um, to keep track of the sizes. And you know, Kay Woods talks about everything being six or six and a half inches, but really, if you wanted to make one of these um, go arounds smaller or larger or you know very small, you absolutely could. I just mm -hmm. I just followed the pattern on this, but you could change it up if you ran out of fabric and you wanted to make a smaller border. Absolutely could, but it's kind of a log cabin where we make this, we make the green, then we make the pink, and then we make the um, 
the other pink, <laughs> the floral, and then the, what do we call this, Pat? A lattice? A lattice work, yeah. yeah. And let's turn it around because it is completely reversible. So the first few times I made this quilt, I kept forgetting to buy enough fabric for both sides. I kept thinking, oh, I need this much. Because you're doing the front and the back at the, at same, the time. same time. Yeah. And I, I'd go home like, why don't I have enough fabric? Well, I only bought enough for the front. So you have to think, whatever I'm buying, I have to double it for the front and the back. Of course, your front and back could be different colors, completely different colors. I chose to make them the same, but you could absolutely put, put different things in front and back. So quick little, I'm just going to leave this here for a moment in case we want to refer to it again. Um, so we're going to do a little close up here, Eric. So I've got a little mini, let's pretend this is six by 18. So I've got fabric, I've got polyester batting. Um, normally, of course, as quilters, we like to work with cotton batting. But this is more of a comforter kind of thing. So I think this poly down batting, which is on my favorites page, um, works a lot better. It gives it a puffier look, which we like. And it's lightweight. And it's lightweight. Now when you pick it up, you yeah. feel how lightweight. It's and also true. because of the art gallery is. Yeah, art gallery is just so soft. We love yeah. art gallery. So once you make this little sandwich with the fabric, you know, just the way, way it's going to look, you're going to surge all four edges, and Pat will talk more about this, but I, I, when I surge it, I just bring my fabric over to the left a little so the blade doesn't catch it, so it's a much narrower hem, and I'm, I'm sure Pat's going to show us um, how, to, how to change the machine to make it a narrower hem, but that's how I do it on my 28-year-old serger. Um, Anyway, so we're going to go around all four sides, mostly just to compact the edges and to make sure when I sew on the next section, I don't lose any of these pieces. It's all surged beautifully. Once, here's the basic technique, and Pat will again talk about it some more. But now I'm going to sew, I'm going to sew this column on, and then I'm going to sew this column on, and then I'll sew the top and the bottom. So let's talk about the technique for sewing that. We're going to take our center piece, and our next piece is going to go right sides together. Ask me questions if you got them. And then, Pat, you said you like the, the batting on the back, on the bottom, right? Well, the batting tends to stretch a little bit, so it should be against the feed dogs. Good, good advice. It helps. So the back piece of green is going to go right sides together on the back. And then we'll put our little piece of uh, poly down batting on the back. So I've got six layers now. I've got front piece, three pieces on the center layer, the back piece, and the batting. So we are going to serge that now with a wider seam because we want to be sure to cover up this little seam here. So it's got to be a wider bite into the fabric to sew that down, and, and Pat will show us how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's, that's what I've got, that's all I've got for demo. So once you've done that side, you do the exact same thing over here, exact same thing on the top and the bottom, and then we're going to go all the way around and serge the edges, just like I did with this one, just to clean everything up before we do our next row. Okay. So we clean that up and then add. So Pat, okay. love to hear what you've got to say. Okay. So. Um, some of you may know I've been teaching some of the serger classes. I've certainly joined you with your quilting in this club. It's gotten me kind of quilting, believe Good. it. <laughs> and the fact that I love the baby lock sergers and I don't have a lot of time, they work for me to serge a quilt together. Why? Because I can do it very quickly. Um, I've got a heavy foot. I can go faster, I feel, on my serger um, and I'm accurate with my serger so I'm going to come over I have a couple of samples that I want to show you um, maybe you could I'm going to come over here first so if you could put this camera on Mark I have a, um, a baby lock four thread Eric can you switch the camera please thank you there we go okay sorry about that okay so you can see that I already have a piece of two strips of fabric in here. I've got this set up for a three thread serger. You can either do a three thread or a four thread. The four thread 
as uh, Mary Janine was talking about before, it makes for a really, really sturdy stitch. You can also, if you feel that that's too much thread and too much bulk in your seam, you can use your three thread. You need to use your left needle. Um, on a baby lock serger here, I'm using my left needle. And I know when I put my stitch width on M down here, I'm hoping we can just, I'm going to turn the serger a little bit. I'm just going to give you a quick little. So when I have my stitch width on M, from left needle to blade, I have got an exact quarter inch. So right now I'm just going to, I've got two strips of fabric. When I surge, see how fast I, I'm not going very straight. Keep in mind I'm in an angle here. I'll just surge it all. In a minute I'll show you a quilt from the back that I put together. So you can see I've got a beautiful finished edge. There's my front. I know that it's accurate. There's my front. And I want to show you, I always like to show my little handy little tools. I love this tool because this is called the Cut Right Handy Gauge. And it's got all kinds of measurements on it. So you can see here it says quarter inch. Can you see that? So I can actually measure my quarter inch. I've got all kinds of increments on here for measuring. So you can see I've got five eighths, one and a quarter. So I, if I want to, if I want a small, really handy gauge to keep next to my sewing machines on my sewing machine table, this really does the trick. And that is the cut right handy gauge. I always recommend these in my classes. Okay, so now I'm going to show you if you give me the that block. So with a baby lock serger again, when you've got your left, when you've got your left needle, um, from left needle to the blade, if you've got your stitch width on M, you get an exact quarter inch. While I'm standing back here and I've got you, I want to show you the quilt that you made with a serger. One of them, yeah. Actually, Holly put this one together. Holly's liking the. See how perfect? And now let's turn it, it around. It is perfect from the back. I know. I just so nice. I, <laughs> look at how beautiful and clean it is on yeah. the back. Uh huh. Very, very nice. Yep. So you've got a nice finished, a really sturdy, sure and very fast. Very you can sturdy. see I put so. my foot down and I just Great go. Great for charity clothes. And the sergers run a lot faster stitches per minute than, oh, a, yeah. than a sewing machine. And honestly, I have a bag here while we're talking about speed. This is one of the classes that um, I've, I've taught a couple of times oh. now. And I put together, these are quilt blocks. I put together all of these blocks. This is the serger tote bag. Uh -huh. It's actually originally a baby lock project, but you can see I got a four patch I got an attic window. You can correct me if I'm wrong here. No, you got an attic I've window. got um, Drunkard's Path down here, yeah. and I've got the pinwheel. Pinwheel, yes. We had a lot of fun yeah. doing this. I've actually written a pattern with this three-dimensional pinwheel. So yeah. Yeah. So this was all put together on the serger. It's not on the next class schedule, but it will be on the following one. Okay. So let's just quick go back to the sergers. So you wanted me to serge. Yes, my for little sandwich. For your flip and fold. Yeah. So I've got the center, yeah, right? So let me just put it together quick. Yeah. I've never done this. I've heard about it. Well. So then I, I'm going to put my batting on the back, right? Like okay. that? Okay, yep. And, the, and the fab, all the fabrics are right sides together. Right. So, so when you open it up, so it'll be just right. to reinforce, I've got the original block that yeah, you had surged together. That's your center, center block. That's my center. And then I've got the, my next strip. Yeah. And it's right sides there. Yeah. And then I put my batting yeah. next on the back. On the back. And then I put this strip right, side right together. sides together. And I'm going to surge it together. Perfect. And okay. you're going to use a little bit wider than I used. So, so I, could, I could adjust. Um, I don't want to teach a whole lesson here. 
Um, I could adjust my width a little bit on the serger, but for this demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and serge it. So I've got my... I can also, on these sergers, adjust my feeding system. I also forgot to talk about the fact that we've got big old honking pins. Normally, I don't like to talk about these, these big honking yellow pins because they're crowbars, but for this particular project, I love them. Um, these yellow, these yellow fat pin so, pins, they're actually called quilting pins on the notions wall, but I don't yeah. like them for regular sewing. So I can tell you though that um, Proceed with caution when you're using pins Absolutely. on your serger because right. I have witnessed oh, after yeah. saying yeah. don't hit a pin, pin, they hit a pin, pins being cut in half. And I wouldn't pin right there, I would pin like this over here where the where the serger will never get to. I wouldn't right. pin in the Right, you always seam. want to. This is the way I pin for a quilt, but not for this quilt. So I was going to say, I put this pin in going this way, yeah. but really you should not put it this way because you can serge it yes. off. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, um, so. so normally what a lot of quilters do that serge their quilts together, they use the wonder clips. Okay. So you would put your wonder clip in Perfect. there. Or the other thing that you can do, of course you have options, you can put your pin like that. going that way, right? Yes. Or what I like is a stiletto. Okay. I like to use my stiletto. Um, it's similar. Some people have compared it in, in my, some of my classes to the purple thing. Yeah. I prefer a stiletto right. because it actually pinches right. both but when pieces. You're, when you're carrying this little hunk of fabric from, from your cutting table to your, you know, a stiletto is not going to help you, but a pin or a wonder clip is going to help you. Yes. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all about having the right tools, right? Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to come over to the other side here. So I'm actually working on the Baby Lock Victory, which is Baby Lock's four thread serger. Let me line it up. You know, when you do a demonstration, sometimes I don't know why things happen. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the Victory is Baby Lock's four thread serger. So I'm going to start, and I can adjust my length down here very easily. It's just like a sewing machine. If I want to put my stitch length at 2.5, because I am surging over something bulky, I can adjust it very easily down here with my dial. And if we could, so, just, if we could just back up to a big, the big picture of audio, not video. Video. Uh, a serger. What a serger does for us is it sews trims and covers the edge of the stitch. So it's doing three things at once. Our sewing machines sew, but this thing sews, cuts, and, okay. and covers that seam. So what have we got here? A this beautiful is, seam. Look at this. So I just surged it. I put my batting down on top of my feed dogs. And now, let me open it up. Maybe we can have the overhead, Eric. I'm going to move over here. There we go. Oops. So now I just surge this down here. Let me center it here. And I had my batting on the bottom against my feed dogs. I had this, the, your original rectangle. And now what you do, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but I go. Hey, it's easy to do. Yeah. So you see now how I open yep. that up. And that's another good place for a pin. Go ahead and pin that down now that you've kind of smoothed it out. Throw a couple pins in there, and you can, you're ready to... Actually, what I would do is I'd serge these yes. three sides and then add my next piece over here and serge those, serge those three sides. So the other nice thing about serging is you're cleaning up your ends as you go. There you go. So it's cutting off um, your, all your little threads mm. and ties, and you end up with a really nice, clean edge. Yeah. So this is a really nice technique. I mean, I could see that just as a flip and fold right. for many projects. You know, and just as an aside, um, we, uh, Eric, we can do big. Um, I have, I've talked about this before, not lately, but I, once I had to take a quilt, someone loved a quilt I had and they wanted to trade me for something, but they needed it bigger. So I cut the binding off and I put my, I put new borders on with this exact technique. You know, I built my borders, maybe I pieced the fronts 
and then I sewed my new borders on just like this because the quilt is already quilted. So right. I, yeah, so oh, that's a like, good idea. This is a quilt. So this yeah. is, if you want to make a quilt bigger, this is a great way to do it. Yeah. Cut off your binding, add new borders just like this, and then put new binding on. So very nice. Yeah. Okay, okay. I have one other thing. I'm. I just want to mention yes. to you. I love Best Press, especially for the serger tote when I'm stitching with, with um, the serger on the bias or whatever. I love to use Best Press and starch so that my um, fabrics don't stretch. Yeah. So I'm a big believer in that. And Somebody wanted to know the name of your tool one more time. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. This is, and it's only, it's $3.95. It's called the Cut Right Handy Gauge. We have it hanging on the wall. I know some of you like to come in here after um, you see this to shop. We have this where all the, our rulers and templates are um, okay. in our up What's front behind the register. So lots of different increments for your accuracy and really, really handy to have right by your sewing machine. I mean, I'm constantly using it. You know, it's got one inch, two and a half. I mean, it's just really handy to have. It's got a hole in it, too, if you want to hang it around your neck, put a ribbon ah. through it. Okay, one more thing. Um, if I could have an overhead here, you'll all notice that I have another serger set up here, and I'm going to demonstrate something else. So the other thing that I love, the other stitch that I love to do on the Baby Lock serger, and it's a patented, patented stitch by Baby Lock, it's the wave stitch. And it's beautiful, I hope you can see it here, it's beautiful for decorative stitching. Can you see how, what a beautiful finish that is? Mm -hmm. So actually, to do something like this, um, you obviously you set up, you have to have an, um, an eight thread baby lock serger. And for my two threads that I used for my wave stitch, I like to balance them. In other words, if I use the glamour thread on one, I use it on the other. I balance my threads for my wave stitch. And then you need your needle thread. So right now I'm using the glamour from Wonderfill for my wave stitch. And then what you do is you put your fabrics right side together. Wrong, wrong sides together. I mean wrong sides together. Yes. The opposite. You see how we're <laughs> trained like to say right side. Yes. So you put your fabric wrong side together, and I have a sample here that I'm going to show you. And then, again, I leave my blade um, functioning so that I get a nice clean edge. Can you see that? Yeah. Beautiful. Great. Yes. Good it's, close up. There you go. Thank you, Eric. Okay, so now I'm going to come around and I'm going to show you. I have. Believe it or not, I have, for those of you who know baby lock surges, I have an evolution set up here. Um, this actually is Kelsey's evolution. It's a smaller machine. It's been replaced now. The evolution is now the accolade. But this is, I wanted to set up two machines, so I brought in Kelsey's. So you see what I'm doing here? I've got it set up for my wave. So it's cleaning up my edge. And slow and steady is the name of the game when you're doing a wave stitch. I can adjust my stitch length if I want. In this case, I like to bring it close together. And then when I'm done, I'm just going to run off. I like to cut my thread when I'm done. Let me snip it. And so you can see here that I've got are we getting a good shot of that, Mark? Yeah. I've got a beautiful decorative wave stitch. Very, very easy. Okay, I'm going to say one more thing, <laughs> and then I'm going to pass it back to you for ideas, for quick quilts, for um, your sergers. Um, these books are great. Donna uh, Robertson, sorry, her, I went blank a minute there. Donna Robertson has a lot of three-yard quilt books that are quite simple, and we carry a lot of them. So the actual one that I have here, I used this book. So probably a lot of you are familiar with her books. She's extremely popular 
um, in the quilting world. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Do we have any questions before I... Bernadette, when I don't want to bind a quilt, I use the wave stitch to edge. The wow, that's awesome. Thank that's you. Idea, yes, Bernadette. yes, yes, yes. You can bind the edge of a quilt. Actually, Kelsey did the Tula pink quilt. Ah. Oh my gosh, it came out beautiful. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. And we used Wonderfill's spaghetti thread, which okay. is um, 12 weight thread with a top stitch size 14 needle, okay. and we did the wave stitch. So can you I use, say we, she did it, I watched. <laughs> can you use thicker threads on yes. the serger than you can on a sewing machine? Yes, That's you can, nice. you can. That makes it nice. You just need to change your needle accordingly. Kind of sure. the rule of thumb is, you know, if if your serger is working well with the needle that you have in it, which is the needle, the needle that they recommend is the ELX 705 CF with a chrome finish. Okay. Yes. Let's take your word for it. Yes. I know that off by heart. If you start a project, like I'm using those needles in both of these sergers right now, if you say switch to Lycra yeah. and you feel like you're getting a skip stitch or something, you're starting to have an issue, at that point I would change my needle to a jersey, sure. you know, something to a stretch a needle. Something with a ballpoint. Yeah, it would actually be the SUKCF is the one. There you go. Yeah, so you can change your needle if you're having an issue. Okay. Do we have any more questions before I go? Thank you for letting us know the sound is good. My my mic was falling in the inside of my shirt, and sorry you couldn't hear me, but okay. Hopefully we got it. Better. Okay. Well, I so hope yeah. I I helped you all to put your baby lock sergers or your other sergers if to work to, to work in your um, quilting project. And if and if we have if we've convinced you to buy a serger, we're we're here all yeah, day until give us a call until five o'clock today. And by the way, uh, we're going to start changing our Monday through. Friday till 7 p.m. starting Monday, the 5th. Monday, July 5th. So we're going to go until 7 o'clock at night, just Monday through Friday. So the store is going to stay open. We're adding hours, trying to get back to normal here. So yes. Monday through Friday, we're going to stay open till 7, seven. instead of so 6. We'll so we 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. So those of you who work um, will be very happy about that. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay, well, thank, thank you, you. Pat. That was awesome. I learned so much. Oh, good. I can't good. wait to go home and play with my serger some more. Good. Um, and I kind of forgot to talk about the this binding. I don't think I've ever done pom-pom binding, but I just felt like it needed something else. And so I came in and found uh, pom-poms that match this particular fabric. This is not on the web, but you can certainly come in and get it. These fabrics are on my favorites page. So, um, and we ordered lots of extra because this was going to be such a beautiful quilt. So, and the way I did the pom-poms is actually it's two layers. So I sewed the first side on with a matching thread and then I flipped it over and sewed it down again, mitering the corners just the way I miter my binding. Um, so all the pom-poms. So it's really a double, it's a double pom-pom border because there's, there's that many on a regular piece and so the, these are pretty much doubled, so lots of great pom poms. So another way to another way to finish a quilt, and it's very sturdy. So there's that. Love to hear any questions you might have about our uh, about any of the surging stuff. Pat's going to be here for a couple more minutes in case you uh, have come up yes. with questions. I'm just getting these out of the way so she that you're is pulling everything in together. all your glory there in front uh, of the camera. So much to talk about. I, I do. I do have a lot to talk about. And in fact, I realized this morning that some of the things I'll be talking about, I talked about at um, Seaside. But, you know, you guys were, it was a big audience and maybe you couldn't see up close what I was talking about. And I did it kind of fast because I ran out of time. So now you'll be able to see it up close and personal. So I wanted to talk about block talk a little bit. If you're on social media, it's hashtag block talk or block talk quilt, one or the other. Um, the idea here is that maybe you've got some big beautiful prints. These are K-facet prints that I picked out and then I kind of fussy cut. Some of them I needed to get three-eighths of a yard to take home and some I need to take home five-eighths of a yard. Um, but I want to show you another, another fabric. I just literally was walking by the panels and I saw this pop out. Um, so this is another panel that you could use. Anything that has a 10-inch um, square and if it wasn't 10 inch you could use a little bit of that border um, to create a 10 inch so if you have 10 inch jelly roll you I'm sorry ugh, 
10 inch layer cakes, 10 inch panels, um, fussy cut to get to this. So lots of different ways. Um, I also, there's a couple non cafe fabrics, that's one of them, but most of them are cafe facet. I love his I love his fabric for many reasons, but one is he's got really big prints, and then he's got small coordinating prints that allow you to pull the whole thing together. I cut these strips and the squares with my AccuQuilt two and a half inch strip die, which made it super easy. Um, the backing is more kaif, and then I had just enough left over to make binding. Um, so, it, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, of course. I'm teaching a class on this. I would consider this a fairly beginner quilt. I forgot to bring my demo on partial seams, but if you look carefully, you're like, okay, how does this work? Because, you know, where do you start? Because if you sew this to this, you've got a little bit hanging over. What am I gonna do with that? And then I sew this to this, and we got a little bit hanging over. So what we're gonna do instead so we're going to sew this to this, and we're going to stop sewing right here, all right? And that way, I can sew this piece on, right, from here, and sew this piece on, and then I can sew this piece on, and then I can sew this piece on, and then I can finish that partial seam. So we call that partial seaming, and that would, you have that last piece you to finish that up. So you can use that technique in lots of different quilts. When you see the words partial seaming, that's what they're talking about. You start a seam but don't finish it, and later you, you finish it. So let's see if there's any questions. So the name of this pattern is Block Talk, and we have it on my favorites page. Um, Kelsey found out about it from a, uh, I think she was saying that somebody was selling, you know, one of the fabric salespeople who was saying that uh, he's been seeing a lot of this a lot of these quilts uh, being made with lots of, because panels, oh my gosh, there's just so many beautiful panels out there. So this is, this is the name of the pattern, Block Talk, and it's $10. By the way, we haven't talked about it yet, but 15% off if you use our discount code. Um, anything you purchase on the web between now and tomorrow night at midnight, Eric, might I get that right? Tomorrow night at midnight, today's Saturday, so Sunday night, 15% off your regular price stuff if you use the discount code TTT. So again, that's regularly priced items, and so that's on my favorites page. So uh, take a look at that. It's also a class coming up, so you can sign up for that. Um, I don't want to get anything dirty. Um, all right, if there's no questions about Block Talk, we will move on. I wanted to, I have another, another new quilt because I was kind of busy. I, can you believe I moved this month and I made three things anyway? So yeah, I'm impressed. Yes, it's been a crazy, <laughs> this has been a particularly crazy week. So you want me to help you? Yes, thank you. I am going to go it's home upside and, down. thank you. I'm you had go, a 50% chance of yes, getting it right. Yes, I did. And I got it wrong. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to lift it up a little bit. Um, this is a quilt made with. Pat, I'm going to have you grab that pile down the bottom, okay. on the bottom of that stair. While she's doing that, I'll show you the back. You know, you guys, most of you know my technique for making a back. When the fabric in the back is just not quite long enough, I insert, I cut off the bolt fold and insert whatever. So in this case, pieces left over from the front of the quilt. Eric, if, if I could get your help bringing this machine up to the top here. Um, and plugging it in and I'll do the rest. So we've got an AccuQuilt project here because I can't get enough of AccuQuilt. And actually, thank you, I used two different dies to make this quilt. I used the half hex, which you guys, if you're a quilter, you might recognize a hexagon. But this is, here we go, got a lot to talk about in this case. So here, here is the die that I used, and I love it because usually hexes, again, if you're not, if you're going to sew it by machine, you're going to end up with some Y seams. But when you sew half hexy, you, you're going to sew this seam and that seam and this seam. You're going to sew a whole row of these little guys, and then you're going to sew row to row to row. So very, very nice. Um, I'm going to do a quick, two quick AccuQuilt demos here, so let's, let's see overhead, let's 
see. Can we, can we get this machine with the overhead, or do I need to scoot it over a little more? There we go. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So I just cut, I have some 10 inch squares here. And by the way, this is the pack that I used to make this quilt. It's by Maywood Studios, and we've got it on my favorites page. I think there's two or three left. Um, it's Kimberbell. Thank you. It's Kimberbell. We love Kimberbell around here. Um, so 10 inch squares work perfectly on this, on this mat. And what we're going to do is we're simply fold it in half. And actually, I'm going to put them together and then I'll fold them in half. So I was doing, I was doing four layers, but the, with the Accu Quilt machine, you can cut up to six layers. Um, for what I can't even remember why I was doing. Probably because there's two of each color on that. So I was just trying to stay organized by doing two colors or one color at a time. Is that so, print out of this, that little camper? I don't think so. I pulled oh. this off the remnant for pile because I just needed a quick, quick cute. yeah, it really is. It's a uh, little campers. I may have to take these little samples home and make something with it. Um, but so you can see where my blades are going to land. So I want to just want to go a quarter of an inch over those blades and then turn my machine on, put my mat down. It's a bologna sandwich. You've got bread, the fabric is your bologna, and more bread. If you don't have those three layers, it won't run through the machine. This is the electric machine, which means it's hands off. All I have to do is give it a tiny little push and I don't even have to grab it. It'll just kind of gently lay it down for me, but there it is. Um, instead of just lifting this off, I like to push down and slide. You can also rub it to get rid of the static electricity. And there I have it, four, four of these guys. And I can, what I did is I laid my quilt out on, on the floor. I was still in an apartment when I was making this. I laid it out on the floor, kind of got my, got my layout figured out. You want me to hold it up? Oh, that'd be great. Um, and so as you can see, there's, there's my hexi. Again, AccuQuilt is known for cutting off their triangles, the little points, which makes lining things up super easy. And by the way, if you're the kind of person that likes to web your quilt, and by what that mean, by, by webbing I mean, instead of sewing two pieces together, putting it back on the design wall, sewing two more pieces, putting back on the design wall, we pick up two columns. So I pick up this whole column and this whole column, I'm going to sew this seam without cutting my thread, sew this seam without cutting my thread. So when I'm done, I'm going to have this column that's all matched up, that's all connected. And it's going to look weird, but eventually when I add this column and add it, I can add all those columns together, then everything is webbed together. And then I can sew my horizontal lines super easy. The reason, thank you, the reason we like to web quilts together is again if you're putting on the design wall you have to keep getting up and down and up and down to sew all your pieces but if you web them together it's a much easier process and things don't come apart let's talk about the binding real quick um, this is a um, gingham on point really so i just cut this straight on i didn't cut it on a bias or anything but i just love the way it came out mm -hmm. so we've got that i forgot to put it on my favorites page but we can find it um, qu i quilted this with my rulers i like to try to do a little bit of ruler work every time i quilt a quilt just just to get better and better at it so i have a little curve so i put my curve from point to point and then i put it from point to point so i didn't do anything in the center but if you've ever taken my quilting class, or I've talked about quilting a lot, I try to quilt down as many intersections as I possibly can, because that's what's gonna get the wear. When you wash and dry this quilt, not the center so much. It's the, what's gonna get the wear are these points. So you wanna nail as many down as you can. So that's what I did there. So it's a continuous, it was continuous. I didn't stop and start. I just go, you know, I just came up with a system that worked and I just kept on going with my curves. So hopefully this, this, um, oh, and you're going to hold it up again. We're going to look at the gnomes real quick. I'm not done. Wait, there's more. Uh, we're okay. going to talk about, we're going to talk about these cute little gnomes. This is another AccuQuilt die, and I'm going to show you how that works. So AccuQuilt also comes up with an embroidery, three different embroideries to nail these down. Either I use blanket stitch, but they also have zigzag and satin stitch maybe? I've forgotten. There's three of them. 
the same one they always use. Um, but let's talk about, let's get a close-up shot here, Eric, of, of the gnome die. So when you want to do, you know, I think one of the best things that AccuQuilt does is comes up with um, appliques, because this is not something we would ever cut out by hand, ever. So um, it's a beautiful, uh, you know, comes out beautifully. And what I've done here is I've taken some fabric, this just scraps from another project, and I've backed it with a fusible uh, steam -a seam So got a bunch of it here. steam -a seam um, it's a little pricier than the others, but the reason we use it sometimes is it's repositionable. So it's sticky, and you can cut something out, and I could move things around, and then they stick until they're pressed. Whereas, but this particular product, which is probably heat and bond, um, when the paper comes off, it's not gonna it's not gonna stick to anything. I have to be, you know, it's well, it's a little sticky, but it, it's it's maybe I did use steam seam. That is steam seam. How can I you can tell? tell by the paper. It's more parchment. Okay. The I mean, heat and bond has a shine. Oh, there, you go, there it you is. See? That's heat and bond. See, I have like yeah. lots of different projects going on here. There's a lot leftovers. of glue on, on okay. the heat and bond and different and paper. And that is not sticky. That's not gonna. That's not gonna stick. It's but I wanted. I wanted a webbing that I could kind of reposition. Oh, I, no, I don't like this. Let me move this. So that's why I used the steam And it, seam. it grips until you press it down. It, and so then you make exactly. it Exactly. So it's repositionable. Mm -hmm. um, another thing before I forget to say it is these little white beards. Um, I used a double layer of white fabric because otherwise I'm going to get my purple and my pink coming through the white fabric. Oh, the shadowing. So when you do it, when you do white on your applique with dark in the back, you're going to want to cut out a second pair, second white beard or whatever. Okay. Double up. Double up. So let's uh, let's let's talk gnome uh, gnome here. So here's his foot. I'm going to need two of those. Here's his nose. I'm going to need one of those. So I can double up, double up on his feet. I can. I'm going to have one red nose. I'm going to have, you know, I didn't bring the right fabrics. I just wanted to show you what was possible here. I'm just going to cover the rest with orange. And we'll put a mat down and run that puppy through. And here we are. Let go. So there it is. I've got probably a few extra pieces here, but you get the idea. There's my two feet and then I would peel off the paper backed uh, and that you know it's going to stick that foot's going to stick there's his um, body there's his beard there's his hat and of course he doesn't have any eyes but he has a little nose it's in here somewhere there's his little nose so you get the idea um, so fusible applique great work on the on the AccuQuilt machine. Um, I'll be talking about more applique next month. I've got another quilt to show you. So if there's any questions, I'd love to hear them. I know Fran Brown's been doing some gnome stuff lately. Isn't she doing the yeah. gnome a month or something? Um, you know what? I'm not sure. Okay, well. She you know something I don't know. Uh, I, maybe, <laughs> I, maybe I just dreamt that. I've been dreaming a lot of weird things lately. I know Fran's been teaching a lot of embroidery classes. Yeah, she's got one next door right now. Yeah, so. it's been. so. Yeah, um, yeah, luckily we can't hear them today. Sometimes they, <laughs> <laughs> they get loud, they get fun. Our classroom um, is right behind yes, us. Yes, yes. For those of you who haven't and been I think here. That sometimes they watch us and we're listening to them. It's all, <laughs> it's all great fun. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to say about the gnome quilt. Let me just check my notes because I had a lot to say. I double up on the white. You can web the half pieces. Steam a seam. Yes, talked about it all. I had a lot of, when I make a quilt, I like to have lots of different things to talk about and make it worthwhile. I have a question about the steam seam. There's two different, do you use the steam seam too? There is only a steam seam too. They, I looked this up, it's like I've never seen steam seam one and they don't make the, it anymore. But oh, they have a steam seam regular and a light. They have a light, the light yeah. is what it, yeah. Let's, let's talk, how confusing so can we get? Right. Either one, I've used both. And I, to be honest, I don't know which I one I guess if is. you want, it's oh, like yeah. it's like heat and bond and heat and bond light. Yeah, let's see the, if they tell us The which, oh, regular this, heat and bond, they don't want you stitching So through, this is light this, steam seam two, and I'm pretty sure that's on my favorites page. Um, but yeah, light steam seam two is what I, is what I like. 
And um, I bought a bunch because I'm using it for another project, which you will see next month as well. You don't well. want to run out. Never want to run out. And these are the dies, by the way, which are also on my favorites page. So I got the half hexy, which is the large one. They have a smaller one too, but I like the big one. Um, and there's the gnome. And by the way, this pattern, I totally forgot. Um, I'm going to share it in the comments when I'm done. Um, but it's a, it's a blog post to make this particular quilt that I just showed you. There's a blog post, which was helpful to me. So I want to make sure that you get it as well. Um, okay. Onward bound. What have I got next? Um, zigzag. Okay. So now I've got some projects that... I call them legacy projects. I can't remember. I think the next thing, the you first thing, those? thank you. That, that was helpful. The first thing on your handout, and I totally forgot to mention handouts, but make sure that you uh, print out the handout. Eric has posted the link on the top of the page, Facebook page, but I'm sure he'll also put a link for us. So the first, first thing are these cute little, um, cute little gift bags. Um, you know, we, we buy these. When you go to a gift giving exchange, you never see wrapped presents anymore. Everybody brings bags. So why not make our own, right? Out of our beautiful fabric. And this fabric is actually a Dear Stella and it's on my favorites page because I love it. And it looks like a quilt. Um, so this is just, you know, a particular size. You can of course make them any size. Um, what I've done here, I used a product called here it is, because uh, we had a big bolt of it. So Lazy Girl uh, Firm Fusible. I use this middle one, so fat, what is it called? Face It Firm. Um, so that's the one I used to make this nice stiff bag. And we've got it, again, on the favorites page. Um, and I'll do a demo of how to make this bag. But when I make... When I pressed the fusible to the fabric, I had a little left over. So I made some note cards and I had extras of those. So the first note card gets attached to the bag and it's just a simple knot inside so they can undo the knot. And then I put the other two note cards in the bag. So it's a very reusable bag. Whoever I give this to can take my old note card off and put a new note card on. I use my wave blade on my rotary cutter to cut around that to make it a little prettier. I also use the same wave blade on the inside um, hem of the top of the back. So ask questions if you got them. Um, so that is, a, that is a, my, the, new, the newest one that I've got. And I'm going to show you in a minute how we put the eyelets on. But let's do a demo on how to make the actual bag. Um, so I take my fabric flat and I attach my fuse, my firm fusible interfacing. It could be deco bond, decor bond or craft fuse, you know, whatever you've got or whatever we've got when you come in, um, that is fine. Just something to make it a little bit stiff. You don't want something so stiff like a, what is it, fast to fuse or, or something? Peltex or Peltex. Yeah, yeah Peltex is the very... brand name, but yeah, we've got some super stiff ones. I don't think you want to want that. So this is kind of a medium, medium firm. So I attach it while it's still on the flat, press it, press the fusible while it's still flat. And then I'm going to fold my piece in half, sew across the bottom, sew across the top. Now might be a good time to finish your edge, whether it's um, your wave blade, your, um, what do they call the zigzag scissors? Um. Uh, uh, zigzag scissors. Pinking. Pinking shears. Thank you. Eric, Eric got that one. He gets, he gets the A today. Um, so whatever you've got to finish that off nicely. Uh, you can even serge the edges if you wanted to. To do a nice wave stitch. There you go. Pat with a wave stitch. Um, if you don't know how to box corners, I like to stick my hand up into the corner and sew across. Just whatever you, the line you decide, you could even draw and measure it. Whatever you decide to sew there, you're going to want to flip this over and do the exact same size. Personally, I don't usually draw it because I don't want to get up off my sewing table machine. So I will just pick a point on my, I, my sewing machine that this point will ride along the edge of. And that's how I just kind of get, my, get that um, boxed corner. So we're going to box both of those corners. And then it's time to flip it out 
Here's another one where I've boxed the corners, and I've also pressed it. It's, this one kind of looks like a lunchbox. Um, it's pretty much the same size as this, but I think pressing is a pretty important part of this to give it some good shape. And then once you store it like that, it's always gonna it's always gonna look good. This one got a little off here. I need to repress it. Um, I folded the bottom down just a little bit, and then finally the last step is to attach my four eyelets for my handles. So let's talk quick about that. Um, I haven't talked about eyelets in a while, and I know it's, it's a weird tool and a lot of people don't have one, but if you do, it's a wonderful thing. If you don't, you want to get one, here, here's how to work it. Um, I'm going to take some, pretend this is the bag. I have a seam ripper, and by the way, this is a great seam ripper, and this is a great seam ripper. Either one I like the best, and I like these two because uh, they don't roll off my desk and hit me in, in a, and point toward my ankle and cut my ankle. Ask me how I know. So this, this one is flat and this one is, is oval and so it doesn't roll off. So either one, I, I ha actually have them both on my table and I use them both. This one, um, a student of mine once ran a ribbon through this cover and I wear it around my neck so when I'm teaching I have a seam ripper right there waiting for me if I need to help students take their seams out. So if you like to hang th tools around your neck, this might be the way to go. I think this had a cover at one point, but I don't know what it looked like. It's been a while. Okay, back to, um, I don't know if, I've, Eric, I don't know if it'd be better to do a close up or an overhead, but what I'm doing, yeah, you got it. What I'm doing here is I'm using my seam ripper to just cut a little, a little hole I should have used a different color besides white, but here it is. Well, this is silver. Okay, so here's a really old-fashioned tool. I don't think they look like this anymore, but there's a post here, and I'm going to put my little um, eyelet. Let me show you what this eyelet looks like, by the way. It's not a grommet. It's an eyelet. You got that? So that gets put on just like that onto the, onto the post of the tool. And what's on the bottom is going to be what's pretty. So I'm going to flip this around. And look, I can't, I, can't, I can't reach that. So that's okay. I just fold this in half, maybe even the quarters, whatever it takes to get in there. And squeeze. And there it is. There is the eyelet. Beautifully done. And I use that for drawstring bags. I use it for... These little bags, I, man, I, I, I can't even tell you all the times I use grommets, but I use them a lot. I have, my, my tool is always handy. So that's how you put the grommet in. You can certainly put it into two layers, four layers, whatever it, whatever it needs to be. Um, but there's four, of course, in that one. I chose a little bit of trim to go with that fabric. Of course, that's nice to have matching trim. Um, yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about the bag. Any questions? Little bag is so cute, up my alley. Good, and you know, you can make a really big one and gift your quilt with the leftover pieces from your quilt. That might be a fun thing to do, to, um, to gift a quilt or some other small project that you've made. So hopefully that gives you some inspiration to use up some of your stash or come in and get new stash. All right, any questions on that one? All right. We're going to move on to another quilt. You don't have to stay if you don't want to. Um, this is my zigzag quilt. And I've lost my... Oh, there it is, right in front of me. Okay. So, <clears throat> again, you guys at Seaside, I think you saw this quilt, but I'm going to talk about it again. We're going to go up close and personal. Um, oftentimes, when you see a chevron quilt, it's made with lots of triangles and then those triangles um, you know it's easy to cut the points off it's easy to get them crooked it's there's lots of there's lots of uh, ways to, to kind of mess up with uh, with triangles and so I found this technique online somewhere and uh, figured out what she was doing and made it um, and so I'm going to show you how that's done so if you're wondering about these colors Long time ago, I took a class with a lady named Louisa Smith. She had us um, uh, building strata with fabric, and so I had these beautiful fabrics left over. Um, so they were, they were pretty tiny. 
So instead of just using those strata fabrics for my zigzag quilt, I threw in the dark green that kind of went with everything and it kind of doubled the size of, the, of quilt that I could make with those little, little strips. So that's one way to go. Here's another, and by the way, this technique can be used for any width strip. It doesn't have to be, I think those ended up one and, those were started out at one and a quarter. So this one I think started out as um, three inch, three inch strips. Same kind of idea, and this time there's no dark green, there's no um, background as it were. It's just, a, you know, lights and darks. So just a little flimsy here, but you get the idea. I really had scraps. There was, there's some rows that are incomplete and there's some are not, so. But I wanted to show that you can make this technique with any size strip. All right, so Eric, I think we're gonna do an overhead because I forgot to bring my flannel flannel board to show it behind me. So we're going to lay this out. The first thing you're going to do is, I love this technique because it starts with two long strips of fabric. And many of you have seen me sew two strips of fabric together so they end up nice and straight. And you're like, of course, why wouldn't it? Well, some of us, we sew our strips together and the back fabric is eased into the front fabric and you end up with a C. Um, and they're not the right length and you feel like, oh, I should have pinned it. It wasn't that problem. You need to sew them correctly. And if you're having a problem with that, I've got a great demo in my November TTNT, and we're gonna post a link of that November Facebook page. And if you go to minute number 42, I believe, um, you can watch me up close do this technique for sewing these strips together. I've had many people tell me of all the tips I've given out, this is their favorite one. So I encourage you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to the November TTNT, um, minute 42, and you'll see what we're talking about. So, sewing these two strips together, um, and now we're gonna press them open. Boy, this, this has been well used. This demo I've done this many times. Okay, so whatever this size is, let's say it's six inches, I'm gonna cut a square. So I'm gonna cut a bunch of squares from this piece, all right? So here they are, not that particular one, but in general. And of course, I have to always have to use my cheat sheet here because um, laying this out is a little tricky the first couple pieces and then, and then it becomes clearer. So let's see if I can get this right. Um, and there's your handout, again, print out your handout if you haven't yet because that'll, it's got all the information on it. So there and there, I'm trying to find more of these pieces. I've got this all mixed up. I did this demo the other day for um, Seaside Peacemakers and I haven't put my demo back together the way I like. So hi guys, if you're tuning in from, uh, from Melbourne, hello again, it's me. All right, so one more just to get the idea, and you, I'm sure most of you have got this figured out. Notice, this is really nice, notice that these pieces are laid out the same way, and then these pieces. So once you got your pattern going, it's a lot easier. So now we're gonna do one more row, just so you can see how this magic happens. And then like that, so then the orange, nope, there, yeah. So you can see how the orange starts to happen and then the blue starts to happen. So hopefully you got that. Um, and now how the heck do we sew these together, right? So this is a quilt that we talk about, it is on point. This is the top of the quilt, this is the bottom of the quilt. So how do we sew these things together? We're gonna sew these together. So we're gonna be sew th sewing them on the diagonal and then we're gonna sew this row and then we'll sew this row and then you can sew your rows together. So we're gonna sew this seam, and this seam, and this seam, and this seam, and this seam. And then you sew those long rows together. You're gonna to end up with um, some pieces on the edges you'll have to cut off, but that's okay. You know, it's not too bad. I made this quilt for my niece. Um, I guess she's seven years old now, but I picked up a bunch of fat quarters that I really liked at a quilt show, and I made hers out of fat quarters. So it doesn't have to be um, 42 inch pieces of fabric, it can be fat quarters, it could be anything that, uh, that you so desire. So um, I'd love to hear questions about that if you have any. Um, yeah. All right. 
I'm glad you guys are here. I've been looking forward to this all week because once this is done, I get to relax for the first time in two weeks. That actually is a great one to put together on your serger. You know, oh, I had there to you say go. That. Well, it's just basic straight lines. You're you can just right. chain them. Yeah. And yeah. I, I asked you before, and I don't know if you if you had an answer for me, but sergers are faster, mm -hmm. than, which is one of the reasons I like piecing on a serger sometimes. Um, how much? How much I'll faster? Come back in yeah, here. please do. How much faster do you think a serger is as as opposed to a sewing machine? Do you, do well, you they fifteen hundred stitches a minute. Okay. And so that's why on the Triumph, there's a speed control for those of us who <laughs> have a very heavy foot. You know, if you're doing a wave stitch, you don't want to. You know, sure. you don't want to. put no, the, you got to be a little more careful. to the metal, so you can. Um, Adjust if it. you want, yes, you can adjust your speed control just nice. like on a sewing machine. Nice. Because it'll give you very consistent sewing. Okay. But if you want to speed it up, you can just move the lever over. And yeah, I just am much faster on it and more precise when I'm doing squares. Mm -hmm. You know, it just is, I, I feel like I do a much better job and a faster job. Okay. So I'm happy with Good. it. Okay. Some of it, you should try it. If you yeah. have a serger at home. Yeah. Try it or come in and sit down and try mm -hmm. one and see how fast. I've made a log cabin quilt with scraps using a serger and it went super easy. Yeah, nice. I'm going to try you know, doing it. I up. like that zigzag. I, I guess I've never thought about I'll that. Get you I a really. Hand out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make it up for the next Hand one. Give me that little pile on top of the stairs. Okay. The both, both little I'm, both I'm little trying little piles. to keep you organized yes, here. Yes, it's, it's not easy. I got all this stuff from my house. I told my husband, do not leave the house. Keep your phone on because I know I have forgotten something. But so far, I haven't had to call. Well, I had to call him to make a phone call. But um, yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about boxed pouches and it's one of your hand one of my handouts that's it should be printed made this one last night um, and I used I tried to match my my fabric to my zipper a little bit I'm gonna do a demo on how to make this bag oh my gosh they could not be easier I also came up with a little demo for it's hard to see on this one but um, we'll see if Eric can get any closer I should have used a contrasting fabric but two weeks ago at the bag class, Holly and Joan were talking about how your ends of your zipper should mm -hmm. have this little tab. Mm -hmm. And I have never done that. And they, they, that inspired me to start figuring it out. And I couldn't find it. I didn't know what that thing was called. So I couldn't figure out, find a YouTube for it. So I had to figure it out. And I think it's called a tab. So correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's called a zipper tab. Yeah, but then also, they were also talking about how you can put a zipper tab at the bottom of your zipper and let the end of the zipper hang out. I, I actually did that once and I yeah. loved it. And I ended mine with a piece of cork because I didn't have okay. to, I just rotary cut a piece of cork right. and Right, but if that's it. called a tab, then what's this called? I don't know. An end? I have to call Joan. I know, I know. But, but Joan and Holly, you guys inspired me to figure out how to do this. So I had a little demo for you guys that I came up with last night on how to do that. And it just finishes it off really nicely and it actually makes the zipper easier to sew mm -hmm. because you're not having to sew across all the teeth when you create the bag. You do have to sew across the teeth to put the tab on, but then once you do, you don't have to sew across the teeth again. So I have that little demo. You gotta make sure they're not metal teeth too. Well, this is sure true. Everybody this knows is that. true. Um, we're, let, uh, since I just talked about it, let's go ahead and do that demo. I think Eric, an overhead might be best here in this case. Let's see, let's see what it looks like. Here's my little wonder clip to put it all together. Um, so I've got some, I don't think I need that. So here's my bag. And by the way, when we start with this bag, we start with a, um, any old rectangle. Your short side has to be able to match your zipper. So for me, I've got a big pile of zippers. So usually I'll go find the zipper I want and then go find fabric that matches it. Um, so here's the zipper and I started to put the tab on. Is, it, is that a metal zipper? It is. It okay. is because that's what I happen to have and I, yeah, it is a metal zipper. But you, you, you probably shouldn't be using a metal zipper in this case, but that's what I had. So do what I say. Don't, don't do what I do. Um, so here's a little tab of fabric. Um, fold it in half and I'm gonna lay it down on top of the zipper. And actually, now's a good time to lay your piece down. And how much tab do you want? Some of that's gonna be taken up with seam allowance, but I do want the tab to show because it's kind of decorative. Um, so maybe I don't want my tab back there. Maybe I want my tab here, right? 
So I'm going to just sew across that very carefully. And when I go, when I hit the metal, I actually hand turn my wheel. I don't hit the gas. I just hand turn it. Oh, it's stuck. Okay, brave move girl. It, move it just a little bit. Try to. Oh no, move <laughs> it some more. Try. Okay, that one worked. Yes, very brave. Um, so yeah, so we sew that on. Once we've sewn on both ends, I can flip it over and cut off the excess, which is what I've done here. That way you don't have all this extra zipper that's getting in your way and that you don't need. So talk about brave. I better sh sure as heck have gotten that because uh, I've cut off all the extra, I've cut off the zipper stop and I've cut off everything extra. But really, I think maybe that's not right. I, again, I couldn't find a YouTube, so I'm just, put, I'm just playing around here. And the tape, by the way, is because if you didn't have the tape, and I'm sure you know this, these pieces just want to do this thing, and then I can't really get a good, get a good line on that. So I taped them together just temporarily. Love my blue tape. I keep blue tape by my sewing machine, and I use it practically daily for all kinds well, of stuff. Well, you know, that's a good tip because actually that reminds me, in our Serger Basics class, we were putting in a zipper, of course, with a serger. Yes. And that tab got caught as it went through on the feed ah. dogs because you know baby lock surgers have sure. long feed dogs and I couldn't understand why it wasn't feeding the, it kind of just got caught but yeah. I was going slow and yeah. it was that little tab got ah, caught so if you in tape there, everything so, down that would go through smoothly yeah yeah for sure okay yeah 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 Good so tip. so there it is right there there's my final zipper um, before I sew it in and so now we're going to sew this in. And so I have a little demo I can actually just show you here. Is I know some of you are scared to death of zippers. I don't do zippers, people say. But right side of the zipper with the right side of the fabric. And I'm going to sew across. And then I'm going to flip this out. And I'm going to top stitch this down. Because if I don't, that fabric might get caught in my zipper. So. Let's show you a, goodness, I had, I had a, oh there, yeah, of course, yeah. So I've, I don't know if you can see, but I top stitched right there next to the zipper to be able to clean it up on the inside. And again, I surged the out of this, but you don't have to, you can finish it, but finish it up nicely because you don't want to open up your bag and have all kinds of hairy stuff going on inside of it. So it's nice to have a clean finished. What were you going to say? I was going to, um, I didn't want to interrupt you. Uh, go though. ahead. Okay. So I'll interrupt you. No, I had this thought when we were talking about boxed corners yeah. before. I, if I have this yeah. right next to me, sure, which I normally sure, do, sure. and I go to box my corner, uh -huh. look at the perfect measurement. So I can use my, let me get it yeah, right here. a longer here. one. So yeah, so I have all different increments. So if I want to measure in one inch, I do it right from the tip, and I measure in, there's my measurement of one inch, and then I mark my line across. If I want it to be longer, if I want one and a quarter inches, See how I match up my top? Mm -hmm. And then I can draw a line or whatever and I, it takes. And I also use this um, for my, when I'm putting in a zipper. Okay. And I want to, say, put this in, like if the pattern says measure one and a half inches in from the end, mm -hmm. I find my one and a half inch increment mm -hmm. and I lay this down and I mark it. Okay. So it's really handy. You're constantly, lot, yeah, it's I mean, right there's a there. lot of measurements there on really them. There mm -hmm. really are. There really are. Okay. Okay, I'll take the box corner uh, away. Okay. So, um, yeah. All right. So once we've sewn our zipper to, on the right side and we've top stitched it, then, and I've got a little demo, another demo here. Then here we are. We've done that. Oh, well, we didn't top stitch it, but you get the idea. The nice thing is, and this one I didn't finish my finish my edges, so it looks a little different. I can bring this up, line up these edges here, and then sew it right sides to the other zipper. So I know I'm not doing this because that's not lined up, right? So it makes it really easy to line up both sides and know that I'm going to have it, it's going to be straight on. Um, what I like to do at this point, if I haven't done the tabs, is open this up and get that head out of the way um, and you can sew that down.
Okay. So once that's sewed down and you've top stitched the other side, now we've got something that looks like this. Get that out of the way. And here it is. It's kind of a, it's kind of a bracelet, right? It's, it's a, a loop. Cuff. It's a cuff. It's got a zipper on, on the short sides, and now I have to just simply finish the edges, uh, finish the ends, so I, I can have a box like this. I have two different ways to go, actually, with these cute little, good old Amy Butler fabric, fabric. It's no longer... I know. Fabric. That's worth yeah. a lot of money, Mary Jane. Seriously? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can have it, because... $500 little... on Etsy. <laughs> See, for a yard of fabric or something? Crazy. That's one um, of Amy Butler's original. Oh, yeah. Well. Yeah, I, I love this fabric. Yeah. Um, and I and you can tell that I, I... It's beautiful. I put everything in order. I mean, I, I lined everything up nicely. So this is the traditional boxed corner. Uh, hopefully you can see that. But then I had a slightly different one that I just wanted to see what would happen. So let me get my fingers in there and puff it up a little bit so you can see it. So I don't know if you can see it a little different. I'll show you how to do that. Just something different. It's, it's you know. So I just have two identical ones except for the ends. So I'll show you how to do that. So at this point, I really like to have tabs or handles or cord or trim or something at both ends because that's what I can pull my zipper against, right? If there's nothing to hold on to, it's a little difficult to get that zipper going. So how do we get that in there? Here's my, here's my little, that's just a ribbon. But if I fold this in half and figure out, I'm grabbing a yellow pin, I fold this in half. So I know where my end, my halfway point is, and there's a pin there, right? And now I know where to put my tab. And here's another little trick with my blue tape again. I probably should just take the blue tape off and show you, but I'll put, I'll put a piece of blue tape right there to hold this down because it's a little, it's a little hard to pin. So I'll just blue tape my trim down. Um, and then the same thing on the other end. It could be just a little tab, or it could be a long, like I make a little wristlet kind of thing you get to decide you know what size you want but the point is you put them exactly opposite of the zipper okay now I'm gonna bring this fold it the other way and I'm gonna sew I really should just cut that off but I'm gonna sew across the top here right and then we're gonna box those corners again just like I showed you with the gift bag you're gonna box those corners to get it to look like this or Watch carefully. I'm going to show you on the other side that I don't have the zipper in the way. To do it that other way, it's simply you bring in, bring in the, cor the ends a little bit. Now, I've gotten doing a really bad job of it, but you get the idea. So you just pleat, pleat the edges and sew across the top. Does that make sense? So push them in like a little bit and get them all straightened out. And maybe a yeah, one, wonder, clip, wonder clip or two. Sew across and you're going to end up with something that looks like that. So something a I little like bit that. different. I don't know whether it shows up on camera, yeah, but yeah, I, I like... Put my fingers underneath. Yeah. So if that's, you're a sewer, that's the kind of end you look at and think, how on earth did they do yeah, that? Yeah, and now you can see how simple that was. Um, and, and, and while I'm just thinking about it, you can... Not right now, but if you come back and watch this again later, you can rewind. So it's like, what the heck did she just do? You can rewind. One more thing to show you with these boxed. I love clear vinyl. And this box actually lives in my car because it has my market bag. So when I want to go get vegetables at Publix or whatever, I throw them in my market bag. But if I were to throw this in a regular thing, I'd lose it and I wouldn't know where my market bags were. My little string, you know. <laughs> so... So that's what's in there. So that stays in my car. So if you're wanting to make a box and you want to know what's inside of it, use the clear vinyl, which happens to be on my favorites page. And then I use a decorative um, zipper. These are Kimberbell. And when you first walk in the front door, they're on your right. And Eric, I don't know if these are on the web. I don't think they are. We're, we're, he's going to check for us. Um, but anyway, they're a very first front right corner, and they come in several different sizes. But they're beautiful zippers, and that's not the kind of zipper you would hide in a seam. You would put it on top, which is what I've done with the, with the, um, with the clear vinyl. 
You have so much stuff. I'm figuring you out. You have so much stuff. That's why you need you need your clear pouches to see. Oh my goodness! What pouch so your stuff. stuff? And is you know, in. I've been I've been have these all these giveaway piles, and every place I've been going lately, I've been gifting and blessing them with my giveaway piles, and I have a lot of giveaway piles. But here's another small one again with the tabs, because we like to be able to pull pull against the tab. Um, so there's a smaller version of a clear vinyl pouch. So Very cool. Um, yeah, so you just sew right on top. That way you can see the pretty, see the pretty decorative. I stitch. like that it's a way of using up your remnants and quilting yeah, it. And absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's and, just. And who doesn't love a cute boxed, boxed pouch? Um, what was I going to say? One more thing. Oh, so the the vinyl. That's also on my favorites page. I this is a 16 gauge, and then the 20 gauge is also on the page and it's a little thicker and it would work just as well but I just happen to be using 16 gauge so that's what that is it's really easy to work with um, you can get a Teflon foot right um, usually I come up with these ideas in the middle of the night and so I have put scotch tape on the bottom of my regular foot and that seems to work well I think a Teflon would, would, foot would work much better yeah in theory the tape yes yeah, I wouldn't do that though no. No, okay. No, I don't like the idea of sticky and what happens sometimes if any of you are embroiderers or whatever and we use or even the scan and cut blue painter's tape can yeah. or tape can peel off and all of a sudden you've got a little roll of it um, somewhere. All true. And you all don't true. you don't know. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, the Teflon feet work really well. Yeah. Actually I don't know if you all noticed, some of you may have noticed that on the Serger, I had a clear foot. I did not notice. Yeah, so there's a see clear what's, foot. See what's happening, huh? The clear short foot. Yeah, so you can see what's happening. Okay. You want to know what's going yeah. on right now. You've got Lettuce. more. Oh, this is my last thing, oh, I promise. Oh, look at this. Eric has a qu there's a question. What a size needle do you like for vinyl? I don't, I don't sew a lot of vinyl, but I would say probably an 11 or a 12. I don't know that I would a go big, a pretty big a one? regular. Or, or, well, yeah. Well, one thing I would do is larger stitches because you don't want to make oh, yeah. a lot of holes. The less the holes, the better because the holes don't heal. And uh, if, you, if your stitches are small, it's just going to perforate and break apart. There's actually so. a vinyl. Schmetz brought out a vinyl needle. Needle, we've OK. Had, we've had good um, response from it from yeah. customers. I have not used it yet. Um, yeah. What about the non-stick needle? Is that what you're talking about? Or is that something else? No, there's a vinyl needle. Vinyl needle. There's a needle okay. that says vinyl. Yeah, on it. I think at home so, I'm using a 14 or, or a size 100, 90 or 100. Those are my number. You know, 90 yeah, or 100. probably. I'd probably use a 12 or a 14. But I open up my size, open up my stitch length to probably a 3.0, just to be sure you're not perforating that vinyl too much. Um, yeah. Yeah, like anything else, do a little test yeah, piece first. Yeah, so once you cut out your piece, test you're going to have it. a little left over. Mm -hmm. Test it, see how it sews together. Um, definitely. Yeah. All right. Good yeah. idea. Good what question. do we got here? This is uh, another oldie but goodie called the um, Disappearing 4-Patch. We've heard of Disappearing 9-Patch, which we've made on occasion. We'll talk about it eventually. Um, there's disappearing pinwheels. If you Jenny Doan with Missouri Star Quilt Company has tons of disappearing designs. This one happens to be a four, disappearing four patch. So I'm going to talk about how that happened. Um, so yeah, why don't we lay this on the table? Got my rounded corners, which I should talk about, but I don't think I have time today. Um, so here we are. Here's my here's my disappearing four patch, and we're yeah overhead is perfect. Um, so each block is made with two five inch squares of fabric and when I like when I go out and buy a charm pack you've heard me say this before but I never buy just if you sew all these fabrics together your quilt I don't know the exact measurements but your quilt would be like I don't know 36 by 30 it would be very small so if you want a decent sized quilt you're going to need to start with at least two five inch packs of fabric plus maybe some background which is what i've done here um, so that's what that is so there's especially if the, see this one has the same it has two of the same ones so that's great but if they were completely different then at least you'd have two colors that you would need for that four patch which we'll talk about in a minute so that's my five inch squares Again, this is one of those great classic patterns that you can use any size square. 
I happen to use five inch squares here. You could use six, you could use four, you could use 10, whatever you got. Um, so I've got a little demo here. Let me see what I've got. Um, yeah, get rid of those. Um, we're gonna start with a four patch. Should I get this out of the way so we don't have so much busyness here? There we go. So we're gonna four patch. So again, that's where my that's where my two two packs come from. And then it, for my quilt, I just use lots of different light colored fabrics. You could certainly just use one light colored fabric throughout, just buy a couple yards of, of a light. But here's here's the magic. Okay, so here's my here's my four patch. All right, well, let's make it disappear. I'm gonna take my four patch and I'm gonna cut it one inch from the center seam. I'm gonna cut it here, I'm gonna cut it here, one inch from the center seam, one inch from the center seam. So that's four cuts, one, two, three, four, all right? When I've done that, I've got what looks like that. Hopefully you would agree that that is still the same thing, but cut into, what looks like nine pieces, all right? So watch carefully, here's where the magic happens. I'm gonna flip this over, this over, this over, and this over. That's all. And I end up, when I sew everything back together, I end up with this block. Can you see that? So the center didn't change, the four corners didn't change, all that changed were these little side pieces. I just flipped them over onto themselves. It's magic. It's magic! <laughs> and then, let me show you a couple other things. So again, that's um, cutting a one inch but what if I were to cut a one and a half inch? It would get a different look. And what if I, this is from the, from the center seam, if I cut one and a half inches. If I were to cut two inches from the center seam, I get an even different look. So hmm. you can make, you can play around. Yeah, so that is, a, that's a very simple disappearing four patch. Anybody can make these super easy. I always wondered what, that meant disappearing. Yeah. And I, I yeah. So you have something and then you disappear it by chopping it up and sewing it back together. That's all yeah, I never, I never knew that. Yeah. Have you ever said that on any of your? Well, not online, but I've done this. I've done this. This is probably the third or fourth time I've talked about it. it on I've line, heard you talk face. about it, but I never understood why it disappeared. Oh, do you understand now? Does that I make understand. Sense? <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm glad, glad I hung around today. Yay, me too. <laughs> Me too. The, the border is actually, I ran out of all my pieces, but I have an awesome collection of polka dotted fabric. And so I inserted those using this, a lot of the same colors as the, ins, the, you know, the center part of the quilt. Um, but these are two and a half inch strips, two and a half, two and a half, I'm sorry, squares, two and a half square, two and a half. And then when you use the same as the two sides, it looks like it's just inserted in there. And it is really. So that is the border, just one of and many variegated thread. And variegated thread. I love yes. that. It ties it all together. It really does. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you. And this is an oldie but goodie, rounded corners. Let's see what year I made this. Cause I put a year on everything. Um, Twelve, tw January of 2012. So that's almost nine, nine and a half years old. This quilt, not bad. And if I haven't mentioned this. I have a quilt closet now, so all of my 200 plus quilts get to live in one place together. I don't have to put them in bins in a shower so, stall anymore. So the next question is, does Stefan know that? Or is He's the one that came up with the idea. Oh. I didn't know what I was gonna do with my quilts. He said, let's, let's make you a quilt closet right next to the master closet. So people come into my bedroom and they see my <coughs> quilt closet and they're like, but where are you putting all your clothes? Oh, there's another closet right next door. So yay for Stefan. Good idea. Yes. He's the man, he's a keeper. 35 years in a couple months, no, August will be our 35th wedding anniversary. Wow. So. Time flies. Time flies. Um, Pat, that's all I got. Well, that and was a lot. Thank, that was wow. a lot, lot of content. Hopefully yeah. everybody got inspired by, Lots of good by information. one or two new things to go home and, and uh, try or pick up something with your discount uh, code TTT. Everything that's regularly priced online, you can purchase for 15% off. Oh, or you can come in the store and say, I want to use that discount code 
Secret Janine talked about, and they will give you that 15% off in the store. Mm -hmm. We are, we are, we love seeing your beautiful faces in the store. We're, uh, masks are, uh, for those who are fully vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask, so that's very nice. Um, I was going to talk to you about the Shop Hop, and um, somebody forgot to bring me information. So, the Shop Hop. Well, Kelsey can mention it. Is. it. Go to our website. Where on the website, Eric? He'll oh. post a link right now. He'll post a link right now. Um, but yes, we have a shop hop going on in Central Florida. It's eight or nine or ten shops. We are one of them, and, um, we'd, and love we are, to, we'd love to see you here. So We're posting it right now. So. Bye, guys. It was, Bye, a, it everyone. was a, an hour and a half. Yeah, I had lots of fun. All right, take care of yourselves. Enjoy.